Greetings and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we set up our Odoo database, installed our sales application. Now we're going to see how we can go in and create a sales quote inside Odoo, our very first one. So if we come up here to the application menu, to this little icon here and click, we can see sales. And now it's showing us these teardrops. And this teardrop tutorial, sometimes it's going to get in the way, sometimes it'll be helpful. We'll just follow along with it when it's appropriate. In this case, it is. It's saying we can organize our sales activities with the sales management app. So I'm going to click that. So sometimes they call it sales management app. Sometimes they call it sales. I tend to do that too. So under here, we can see that to create a quotation, we click the create button here. Now they're telling you that the colored buttons are usually pointing to the logical actions. They're not default, but they're saying that these would be the ones you might most often use. So I'm going to go ahead and click create. And it's going to come down here and prompt us to install, you know, put in a customer. And so we can write the name of the customer here on the fly by just typing Bob Sacramento. And you'll notice that as I was typing here, let me just put Bob, that Odoo now will go out on the internet and find matching companies that will match with what you type in here in your customer. So this is a really cool new feature. It's going to probably really be expanded on in the future. But in this case, we're going to say that they're not in this list. So we're just going to create our own customer, Bob Sacramento, like that. And you'll notice that we can create on the fly here or we can do a create and edit. And for this example, we're just going to do a create, we're going to do a walkthrough, and then later we'll really look at the customer form and all the details of it. So I'm just going to click create Bob Sacramento. So it created the customer there on the fly. I can come down here to add a product and click it and add a product on the fly. So let's go ahead and introduce our real world scenario here. Now, like every Odoo class video, this one has a scenario where we can walk through and set up a workflow for a real company. This was from a real case study, a real client that I work with, and it's for a marina. And marinas have a lot of different products. They have a lot of different services. And in terms of products, they might sell boats, they might sell life jackets, they might sell a uh, rental of slips, and all these kinds of things. So we're going to pick one of those, and I feel like right now we need to sell a boat safety kit. So I'm going to type for our product, boat safety kit. And just like with our Bob Sacramento customer, we can have our boat safety kit product created on the fly by just clicking here. Or we could create it and, and begin editing it. We'll take the same action and we create our boat safety kit product and it gives us here if you you can see here it says select a product or create a new one off like that's that same that's why I don't sometimes like this teardrop thing is it didn't get that we acts actually did create it on the fly just not quite always 100 percent anyway we can come in here and change the description or add additional information is usually what you might want to do so we can say boat safety kit contains a life jacket and it contains a first aid kit and it contains oh, safety manual. So you could do like that. That's one way that you could just sell a product with multiple things in it is like a kit. We'll see later in much future lectures and in future courses how you can describe these products in a lot of different ways. Here's our order quantity right here and we'll just leave it at one and we can set a unit price here and we'll see that uh, Let's charge $175 for our boat safety kit. Now you'll notice these are all purple. This one, this one, this one, this all these are purple. And purple means they're required. So just to make that clear, we're gonna make sure all these fields are filled in. Now you also have a taxes field. We're not gonna worry too much about that. We'll just uh, accept the default tax. Is it might be obvious, you can click this close box to delete a tax here. So you can see that delete come up. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's say safety kits are tax exempt. So we're going to delete that just so you can see how you can have a no tax sale like that. And you'll see down here that it has our untaxed amount and our final total. And that we can come up here now and click save to save our quotation. And this is an example of why that teardrop tutorial works really well sometimes. Other times it doesn't. We lost it here. It would have gone on with more steps. But it actually kind of failed us. And, and to be honest, I have done this lecture many times, you know, like three or four times to this point because that teardrop thing would get in the way. So I'm glad to be past it. 
you'll notice that when we save our quote, it went and created a actual label or a name for the quote. It, it starts out with SO for sales order, and then this continues to get incremented. And obviously, when it gets to 99.9, it's going to go to 1,000, and it'll automatically expand out digits. You don't have to worry about this only being three here. So at this point, we could print the quotation by clicking print here. And we could save the PDF document, or we could open it here. Let's go ahead and open it so we can just see what a sample sales quote looks like. And you'll see we don't have a logo set up yet. We don't have a company name defined. So these things are we will set up in future lectures. And you'll see right here, it's got our quotient date, our, it's defaulted the salesperson to us, and a description. All of it's just filled in here, and very simple, straightforward, but it's important that you get to see it. Now, at this point, we are only in a draft mode. It's a quotation. It's really not a full sales order here. And you'll see here that it, it knows that we actually did print it, however, and it assumes with that that we sent a quotation. If you needed to... You, in, in the past, you'd be able to go here and change that back to quotation, but it's always going to know you sent it. So use, some of these tags, you'll be able to click on them and change their state. In this case, this is not one of those. You won't be able to actually click and change states here. We can confirm the, the quote by just clicking confirm. And at that point, you can see that it's going to change to show that we have an ordered quantity we have a delivered quantity and an invoiced quantity. So it's three different quantities that it's going to keep track of as we move this quote through the system. <clears throat> so if we come back up here and we click quotations again, you'll notice that we don't see any quotations in here now. And it's because we have confirmed that and turned it into a sales order. We can come here under orders and click orders. And now we'll see under here our sales order listed right that and we can also see that it is ready to be invoiced so let's go ahead and click on it and we have a purple create invoice button remember that purple buttons are usually the actions that are most common that you would use such as editing it or creating it so if we needed to we could edit this order previous versions of Odoo uh, I think back in like Odoo 9 maybe Odoo 10 I think Actually, I think beginning in Odoo 10, you could edit sales orders after they've been confirmed. So I can come in here and edit and say they need two of these boat safety kits, for example. So I can choose two. And now here comes our teardrop again, telling us to select a product or create a new one on the fly, which we did. That time it got it. Now we can click Save. Our teardrops are back again, and we print again. This time, hopefully... I can just hit OK, and now I guess our teardrops go away again. So now that we have our order, we can we could lock it. And so rather than creating the invoice right now, we could lock this order. And th at that point, when you edit, you're not going to be able to change anything. So you can click on it and see details on it, for example, but you're not going to be able to edit any of these items on there. And I can notice that I didn't put in a price or it didn't save it. I thought I put in a price. So that's a little disconcerting that that happened at this stage and that I had locked it. So here's how we can fix that. I can click unlock to unlock it. We can now come down here to our unit price and let's put in $175 and save. So. I apologize for the glitch, but it actually worked out. So you saw the reason of why you can have the lock and the unlock, and it's actually useful. So I could lock it back down again once I fixed our unit price, for example. So now let's say we have our invoice or sales order exactly the way we want it, and we want to now create an invoice from it. So let's go ahead and click Create Invoice, and we're going to go ahead and click Create and View Invoices, just like that. With that, we have an invoice, and you'll see that an invoice number has been created. So just like our sales order number here, S0001, we now have an invoice, INV, 2018, obviously the year, and then we increment 
this number. So every document, no do, is going to have its own document number. Not necessarily displayed here in the same place, but usually there's going to be some kind of document number for these types of transactions. Now you see our teardrop here is saying that we can validate our invoice and a reference will be assigned to this invoice and you will not be able to modify it anymore. So it's telling you exactly what it's going to do. I can click validate. And our teardroppy things didn't really go anywhere. Yeah. So at that point, we actually have created the invoice and validated it. So it's actually ready to accept payment. We can come here and say register payment. And we're going to assume that they pay the full amount. We have payment amount of 350. Payment journal is to the bank. We could say cash. So these are the two payment journals that are set up by default. And it has a payment date, obviously defaulted to today's date. We could change that here if we needed to for any reason. So say we want to set the invoice tomorrow, we can do it just like that. And then there's a memo created that puts the, the invoice number in here. And it puts that 01 as in a reference to that this would be the first payment. In this case, it's the full payment, but that, uh, that is exactly what that's for in case there's multiple payments. Now I can click validate. Again, purple is the most common action. And we're done. We've created a quote. We've confirmed that quote. We then took that quote. We confirmed and turned it into an invoice. And then finally, we validated that invoice. You'll see up here we have these breadcrumbs that if we needed to get back to the sales order, we could by clicking here. And then in order to get back to the sales order, we could click there. So those breadcrumbs are kind of handy, works the same way throughout there in Odoo. So with that, we're going to end this lecture. This was basically a, just a general walkthrough of the very basic sales order to invoicing process. For the most part, that is sales right there. That's the sales application from the very beginning to pretty much the very end. Now, in between, there's a lot more to learn, a lot more processes, a lot more ways you can configure Odoo. In the next lecture, in fact, we're going to take a look at this new dashboard up here that allows you, I should say it's like a, a configuration dashboard. It lets you walk through here how to configure sales and the whole Odoo installation for that matter. It's a nice little addition and that's what we're going to take a look at in the next lecture.